What's going on guys? Welcome back to Carbocane. And as Surging Sparks product gets scarcer and scarcer and prices for cards and sealed product is just going up and up. I have absolutely been scrambling to for anything that's out there so I can open here in hopes of pulling that blasted Pikachu. Now, today's stuff we have four of these triple blisters which we know by now because of my constant complaining i don't like them but it's seemingly only really the things out there that's available or readily available when i say readily i use that term very loosely and if you get lucky now and then you find some of the sleeve cardboard blisters or boosters these are hard to come by also um Luckily, we've got a bunch of targets and Kmart's here that have, like, recently sort of restocked, or rather just, you know, taken it out from the back because they've realized, well, these are going a lot faster than we anticipated. That being said, though, buying booster boxes, at least here in Australia, here in Sydney, has been, um, or is incredibly expensive to the point where, on release, a sealed case would probably cost you about a thousand something or high 900s or something like that, depending on where you go or like what kind of deal you get. And right now, a sealed case of Surging Sparks is selling for like 1900, probably more soon. I don't even want to know. It's insane. But that being said, we have little pockets of product around, hoping that we get some of that Evolving Skies luck that I had. So let's get straight into this. So I think we'll start by probably unthing these thingies. I really should start just like having these pre-done at this point because seeing as we're opening so many of them, we've gone through this process a million times. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we are going to fast forward. Give me two secs. And voila, uh, just like that, I totally forgot that I'm the editor of these videos and that I can do whatever I want. So magic, they're all suddenly unboxed. No uh, pack opening or product unsealing ASMR anymore. And we just get straight into it. And honestly, like, I feel like this has very much been another Twilight Masquerade for me in terms of, you know, chasing that one thing. Oh, well. That triple, first triple pack is starting off well. I'm glad to be getting it yet. Another brilliant blender. As we know, I love that card. And I feel like it's one of the ones that's just gonna make a splash at some point because... <sighs> Low key, United Wings right now is just missing that one more element in terms of the competitive play. It's missing that one more element of surprise or beat down. And I just get this funny feeling eventually we're going to get a fighting bird so probably like something like a halucha or something i just got this funny feeling that it's going to happen it's one more united wings bird in the lineup would be amazing because then it'll probably like replace things like ditto and all that kind of stuff or at that point you'd probably start dropping your manatee and all that stuff so it could happen i'm holding on to hope I honestly really do think there's going to be one more united wings bird coming along and then once that happens it won't be best deck in format. It'll be funnest deck in format. <gasps> Flapple! Okay, nice. Oh, wow. So, okay, so our first triple pack, double hit. Good omen? Or foreshadowing? I don't know. Because even though I haven't hit that Pikachu yet, even though I haven't hit the Pikachu yet, my general luck with Surging Sparks hasn't been terrible. I'm pretty sure, like, if you guys have been watching the videos for a bit, at, or if you're, like, tuned in for, like, Surging Sparks, or, you, like I said, you have been watching for a bit backwards, you will see my luck kind of roller coaster a little bit. Stellar Crown was good. Surging Sparks has been good. I haven't hit the big boys yet. Twilight Masquerade was terrible. <laughs> and then I feel like most other sets weren't too bad as well, but... In terms of like getting extra product on the side and all the little, you know, extra releases they do, the luck hasn't exactly been there. But Surging Sparks has been pretty nice. It's been pretty nice. I cannot complain, honestly. Because I feel like this set is so outrageous that 
even cards in here that you wouldn't typically think are gonna be too expensive. Oh wow, Palisand Full Art. Okay, so Mitral packs today are doing pretty well, which is kind of sweet. <laughs> here am I sitting, like Nay saying, yeah, you know what? I've got the triple packs. I'm, I'm relying on four triple packs that I found and I'm gonna regret it. At this point in time, not so much. But now that I've probably wished that sentiment into existence, it'll probably start to treat me terribly and I only really deserve my just reward for uh, for doing that. But then again, I'd like it to also reverse psychology this and just um, go the opposite direction. All right, so that's the second pack done. So the second pack got its only single Palisand hit. Now third triple coming along. But yeah, as I was saying, because of the... And I think it's fair to say that the sets, obviously it's been underprinted for now, I think, I believe. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if it's been underprinted for Australia. Like we kind of didn't get like much of a big shipment and maybe like, you know, other places like America and stuff like that got like far bigger of a shipment. So product wasn't that scarce and not rising. Oh, flag on full art. Booyah. Okay, all right. So the good thing is my hits out of these triple packs so far haven't been base EXs because those annoy me. Like when you get a base EX that's like not good, that's like not competitive, it's like, oh, <laughs> like slacking. Um, but yeah, like, I'm not too sure how the stock has been for American and all that kind of stuff, but here in Australia, there's just nothing, so we probably didn't get much of an allocation, like, across the board, and anything that was allocated has just been absolutely snapped up and cracked for Pikachu and then also, you know, scalped to, to oblivion because of Pikachu, and it's just risen the cost of Pikachu by so much globally, and then just risen the cost... At least here in Australia, I feel like far more than anywhere else in the world. Because a set that's been out for about like, what we'll say, two, two and a half weeks, three weeks. To have risen to the point where a case of it is starting to look like it's going to climb to Evolving Skies levels. And it's on an Evolving Skies set is absolute insanity. It's... It's crazy. It's crazy. And because of that, it's just going to drive prices for like all the other cards. Like example, you know, let us just take Flapple for existence, right? Yeah. Let's say hypothetically it's $10 in normal print and allocation stock. Like this guy's probably going to go up to like 20 now in that sense. You know what I mean? Because it's just, there's nothing around. There's like... People are buying and not cracking the packs and stuff like that. And then anybody who does decide to latch on and buy a case for $2,000 is more than likely not going to open it. <laughs> They're not going to open it. I feel like if, if you've gone past the point where you've paid so much for sealed product, then you're more than likely keeping that sealed for like way into the future investment. And that's one of the unfortunate corners of the hobby. Um, I don't think it was really surprising though. I mean, it was kind of forecast because, you know, Pikachu's very first SIR or it was like alt art. Not that, and this is probably going to be, I, I don't even think it's controversial to say this, but I, I personally feel that the Pikachu alt art's nothing too special. I feel the same way about Greninja and not because I don't have either one. It's because I'm just like... I don't feel it. It didn't. It just the Greninja one looks a little bit nicer. The Pikachu looks subtly nice. Like it looks. It looks nice, but it's not like whoa, you know. Like even even if there we go, we got Cell Edge base. So every single triple pack had a hit in it, and one had two. So that's good. We can't complain about that. So we got the Cell Edge, Palisand, and Flygon full out. So yeah. I guess my luck with triple packs haven't been too bad in terms of the hits. They've actually been, you know, of relative value, relative rarity, and not base EXs and stuff like that, which is, you know, what you just don't want to hit after you've, like, opened up booster boxes and all that kind of stuff, because you've got enough of this at that point. Um, yeah, it's, it's insane to think that people would buy product 
that expensive and then open it. Like, it's not going to happen. And, like, SIR to Pikachu, SIR to Greninja. Personally speaking, I don't really see any... I don't see the massive hype behind it. I understand it's because they're first SIRs. That's probably... That's probably where the price has come from and then like all the price manipulation in the background has happened and it's pushed it forward into oblivion and then people latch on to that price manipulation and then then the whole set just naturally just goes into the stratosphere when it comes to sensibility in terms of pricing. Um, but like, even though I've got a couple of those Moonbryons, I was lucky to get a couple of those during like the random run of um, Evolving Skies packs that came out. I don't really feel like Moonbryon's all that nice of a car. I, you know what? Funnily enough, I think the one that's coming out in Prismatic Evolutions is far more nicer than the one from Evolving Skies. But then, at the same time, I can understand why the Moonbryon costs as much as it does. Because it looks... It looks good. It looks like an alt art, right? It looks good. Like it's all it's it's all defined. You can you can tell what it is. Yada yada yada. It it does look okay. I just don't think it's the best kind of thing. But in comparison to Greninja and Pikachu, I don't think there's even a comparison. I don't. I think the Moonbryon really does blow that one out of the water. So I can kind of understand why the price point for Moonbryon is where it's where it's at. And I feel like. The Pikachu and the Greninja has literally been overhyped into existence right now because it's probably their first ones. Pikachu is Pokemon, let's be honest. It's, it's Pokemon's mascot. It's it's you know, for, you know it's <laughs> anyone that watched the show grew up watching Pikachu zap Ash twenty million times and all that kind of stuff. So it's like synonymous with Pokemon itself. I mean. I'm pretty certain, wasn't it, Japan had Pikachu as their mascot as well? Like, he was running around and, you know, like, it's... So I guess it makes sense. It makes sense from a exposure point of view. But, yeah, I guess, I guess everyone's opinion each their own. I don't really... I don't really see the, uh... I don't really see the ideology behind... Pikachu's mass, like, media, like, we're gonna say meteoric rise at this point, because that's exactly what it is. And these, uh, these single blister packs haven't been very nice. I've obviously hit into the batch where there's nothing. <laughs> it's been tilted. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, you, you kind of have to just accredit Pikachu's meteoric rise to the fact that it's Pikachu. And Greninja's, like, a low... Let, I feel like in the Western world, Greninja's like a favorite, but not nowhere near as a favorite to like the Japanese people. The like Japanese love Greninja, right? But again, I think Greninja, Greninja's price rise and all that kind of stuff is completely dependent on the fact it's his first SIR and probably the absolute dismal hit rate of the Greninja. Even though it just feels like, at times, people were just, like, pulling those things like a grape from a vine. It's insane. And these ten packs haven't been good. So, now, you know what? I think my luck is starting to go down. <laughs> Here it is. The luck's gone down. Unless. Maybe. Don't know. One decent hit here. Can turn... It all around. Okay, so we got another Sarah Ledge. So you know, at least we're we're hitting into like a Terra, a Terra. What do you call it? Um, Base EX, and not just like that flat color slacking or Durant. I think we've got enough Durants. I got I got enough Durants to make a full a full deck. I got a place of Durants. Sorry, we don't need any more Durants. Durants time is up. We don't need that anymore. Hilotral Surfer and Terrapagos. Two more packs. Ugh. It looks like we're gonna go. We're gonna. We're gonna go bust on this particular set of ten, which is the first time because we've actually been doing pretty decent with the uh, slave boosters. But again, that's the uh, risk you run when you buy them like that because you're not guaranteed like that hit rate that you get in booster bo boxes. Completely gone. It's completely gone. It's all about how they're. 
put on the shelves and all that kind of stuff at this point, and how they were packed into the cases and all that kind of stuff, and then just, yep, chucked onto the shelves, and... Okay, we got a lot of this, okay. Didn't exactly save <laughs> the amount spent on the, um, those there. So, not a very good hit rate this time, but, you know, at least we got stuff of value and not, like, two slackings or Durant or something. I, at this point, I'd be, like, happy with a killer watch rule, base EX, because, believe it or not, in that entire case of Surging Sparks we opened, I only got one killer watch rule. I only got the one. I don't understand how I only got one killer watch rule. I... I don't really get it. It's it's like a, a rare base EX. It doesn't make too much sense. I, I have no idea. But, um, you yeah, know, going into that, the triple packs delivered this time, for sure. The triple packs are definitely delivered. We've got the Serilage there. Flygon Full Art. Palisand Full Art. Brilliant Blender A spec. Flapple IR. And then the 10 single packs, which were pretty disappointing. So it's like, one per five on average there, where usually I think it was like one per three in the past couple videos. There, so maybe the luck's going down? Or maybe it's just giving me a little bit of false hope of the luck going down, because I've been kind of wishing the luck going down to existence for a while, and it's kind of like, okay, here's your medicine, and then we're gonna put you on the right track, hopefully. That's the cope. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take it easy, and I'll catch you in the next one.